Hello and welcome to a video from filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. I am Chris. There's a link to my website in the description of this video. And today we're going to be looking at a poor man's port scanner. Now, if you need to do port scanning, uh, my personal opinion, the best port scanner out there is going to be Nmap. And you should use that if you can. But let's say you don't have Nmap. Uh, there are other options uh, that you may not know about. And map uh, is on is easy to install on systems, but if you're on a minimal system, you may not. But if you have Bash, and I specifically say Bash because this is a Bash feature you may not know about unless you've been around uh, the uh, Linux world for a while, um, is that Bash actually has networking capabilities built in. If I was to list out stuff in my dev directory, which is my devices, so you know basically mostly hardware stuff, you can see all this stuff here. You know, uh, video would usually be webcams or other video inputs. Uh, but if we look at T's here, see we have these TTYs, but there's no TCP. Now, if I was to echo into dev and give it a file name that either exists or doesn't exist, most cases I'm gonna get a permission denied, right? Because I don't have permission to write stuff there. But if I was to write to TCP and give it some a number and then another number, it just kind of hangs. What's going on there? Why Why is it not giving me permission denied or file does not exist or something along those lines? Control C to kill that. Because even though you don't see the dev TCP inside that directory, it does exist within Bash. Bash will create these things as we go. So if I was to echo into that, I could give it a IP address or a domain name and a port and I can retrieve information or at least detect information from those uh, servers. You can use this to pull down files uh, and web pages from the internet. Uh, the problem with it, and, and that's something you can look up, I'm not gonna go over in this video, it, it's not as useful as it used to be because of HTTPS. As far as I'm, I know, uh, HTTPS, the encryption doesn't work through this, so you'll just basically get an error if anyone uh, can correct me and point me to tutorials on uh, doing this with HTTP, HTTPS, that'd be great. But even though it's not as useful as it used to be for downloading files and information from web servers, you can still use it as a port scanner. Now, there'll be directions or notes in the description of this video to everything I'm about to go over, but if I was to echo into TCP or dev TCP, again, give it an IP address or a domain name, I'll just give it uh, 127.0.0.1, which is the same as localhost, so I'm pointing it at my own machine, and then I go forward slash in a port number. In this case, I'll do eight, right? What are we gonna do? Oh, we get an error, connection refused, because I don't have port eight open. But if I was say port 80, which I do, because I'm running a web server on my computer, I get no error. So of course we can detect was the last command successful or not? So here I can say ampersand ampersand, and I can say echo port is open. And when I do that, I get port is open. But if I was to go back to like any port that's not open, but I'll do eight again, you can see we get our error. Now we can always then say our or operator. So pipe pipe, and I can say echo port is closed. And now we'll get our error message with port is closed. So we have port is closed. And if I was to scan port 80, we have port is open. Now, let's say we, we don't probably don't want this error message. We just want to know that the port is closed. What I could do is wrap this in parentheses and then say two greater than and pipe all the errors into dev null. And now we'll get either port is open or port is closed. And of course we can do this with a for loop now to loop through everything. So I'm not gonna print out if a port is closed because I'm gonna be scanning a bunch of directories. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna say four and we're gonna create a variable called i and we're gonna loop through the number 20, in this case to 10,000. You could also give it a, a list of ports that you wanna scan, but I'm just gonna scan a bunch of ports. Then we're gonna take that information and we're going to, again, echo basically nothing. Basically we're putting a new line character into dev, TCP, and then an IP address or domain name, and then that port that we're generating over here. Dump all errors to null, and then we'll just, if the port is open, if that is successful, we'll say port, and then give it the port name is open. I'll run that on my local host here, and you can see it's listing all my open ports. And it doesn't take too long, because I'm running on my local machine. If you were to do a remote machine, it'd be a little bit slower, uh, but I could do something like so. I could say, instead of looking at my local host, I'll just point it at my router and I will run this 
and now it's going to start listing all the open ports on my router. So that is a poor man's uh, port scanner. Uh, so again, this is uh, a functionality of Bash and possibly other shells. I know it doesn't work in Z shell, but it's, it's built in Bash, and that's why you won't see this directory because it doesn't really exist. If you just look at it in Bash, Bash goes, okay, we're looking for a server, a port, and again, there's commands you can do to download files from a website uh, or other network operations, but again, with current modern web uh, sites, mostly using HTTPS, that's, I, as far as I know, has become mostly useful, useless. Uh, but if you are on a bash system, you don't have Nmap, and you need to do a quick, simple scan of ports, this is something you can do. Again, there's links in the description of this video to all the notes that I went over, so you can look at those. Um, I hope that, again, this is not something you're probably going to use regularly because Nmap is just a better, uh, a better option. But in a pinch, having this information, this knowledge, uh, could be very useful. I thank you for watching. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. Again, that's Chris with a K. There'll be a link in the description. I also have a Patreon page. I have a PayPal account and a LibrePay account. If you can support me financially, oh, that would be so great. I would appreciate it. If not, I do thank you for watching, for sharing, subscribing, commenting, giving thumbs up or likes or whatever. And I just hope that you have a great day.